<laughs> ah, rhythm is a dancer, Anthony Elanga, 4-2 against the scum at Ellen Road. And I'll tell you what they are, scum. Through a coin at Anthony Elanga, he went and scored the fourth. He bagged the fourth. Manchester United winning what was one of the most chaotic most. One of the most chaotic games you're ever likely to see as a Manchester United fan. Old school, literally felt like the 70s. Puddles flying everywhere on the pitch. Two goals from United in the first half. It felt like the game was dead and buried. Then they go and score from across. 2-1. 24 seconds later, it's 2 all. You think, have we done it again? Have we really done it again? No, we have not. Ralph Ragnick's in-game management there, spot on. Took Fred off for Paul Pogba, a decision where I looked at it and went, what are you doing, Ralph? Well, you know, he's bringing on the player who's going to score the third goal. What else are you going to do? Bring on the player who's going to score the fourth goal. Manchester United there today, apart from a 10-minute period, totally, totally dominated a bang, bang average Leeds team. But wow, I'm genuinely not really sure where to start with this match reaction. There are so many ridiculous talking points. Harry Maguire. After a week where he was under the microscope, fairly, I think, completely as well, gets the goal from our first corner that we've scored this season, 140 set pieces we've had or corners. I'm exhausted after watching that, let alone playing in it. Those players, yeah, today, my God, Bruno came up with the goal. Bruno with the header, Bruno with the pass for Ilanga, Jaden Sancho with two assists. I feel like I need to sit back and try and soak in what we've just seen. After a week where it was utter frustration as a United fan, right? You're sitting there watching your football club and you see all these stories coming out about dressing room leaks, about uh, Maguire and Ronaldo having showdown talks. And then Rashford comes out and says that uh, Christian Falk's story is all bullshit. And then Maguire comes out and says that the stories about a dressing room split are bullshit. You're like, I, I, I don't want this to be happening at my football club. I just want to be going into the game, watching it and watching my team Played with real commitment. And today, in the first time, I believe, that we've played there at Ellen Road in the Premier League with fans in, what, is it like 15, over 15 years? It was a game that meant a lot, maybe not to the current generation of fans, but to the older generation of fans. Leeds United away was always one of the first fixtures that they looked for. And you saw it today. You saw why. Those players actually today, in my opinion, they played for it. They played for that badge on their shirt. And I'm not really sure... Where I genuinely, for the life of me, I'm not really sure where you're supposed to start with that match reaction. That first half, United were totally, totally dominant, right? We were playing excellent football. Paul Pogba, man, he looked like he was playing in a swimming pool, but he was like a synchronized swimmer. Perfect poise, perfect balance, composure everywhere. My God, Ronaldo should have scored from that clear-cut chance that Pogba made, purely through just the craft of his football. That's why it made it all the more surprising he got taken off. But given the fact Fred scored the, the third goal, I think it was justified, right? But United totally dominant in that first half. Maguire gets the goal from the corner. You think it's, I mean, it's richly deserved. Given how United are playing in that game, it's richly deserved that we got that goal. And then as the game was progressing, it just United were just calm, comfortable, controlled. It was just, we were clearly the better team with the better players and the better performance. And that second goal there, by the way, Victor Lindelof, Hats off to you, my friend. What a run that was from deep from Victor Lindelof today. I would probably argue he... I mean, we might have, we might have conceded two goals there, but you could probably put Victor Lindelof, Lindelof sorry, up for a, a Man of the Match nomination. Up there with Jaden Sancho, probably. Up there with Bruno Fernandes. I think so, anyway. But people might argue that Bruno Fernandes didn't do enough in the game, didn't he? But, but, but. Guys, he got a goal and a fucking assist, all right? People seem to like to pick holes in Bruno's game. Look elsewhere in this United team, people, for the places you want to pick holes. I know it's frustrating. I know there are parts of games that pass him by, but seriously, try and... Who's oh, a stat merchant? What do you mean? Getting goals and assists constantly. Affecting games constantly. You want to try and pick a hole in this United team. Seriously, you're wasting your time if you're looking at Bruno Fernandes. Look elsewhere. But in that second half, right, we came out and it was a lucky goal. He wasn't shooting. He knows he wasn't shooting. He went for the cross. Boom, it gets in the net. De Gea caught out a little bit. I'll be completely honest. And you're thinking, hmm, United won't do this again, will they? Well, 24 seconds later, of course they will. Dan James came up right across the box. It wasn't a foul on Bruno Fernandes. I don't think any United fan would be too begrudged about that decision. It definitely wasn't a foul. And then you're looking at this game. You're like, right, who's going to change the game? You're looking at Bruno Fernandes, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. I think today the, the game's... I mean, Ronaldo was never really going to play that well in, I suppose, those circumstances, those... Uh, conditions. Uh, 
Maybe I'm making excuses, but Ronaldo, it was a game that sort of passed him by. It was the, the pace of it was too intense. The, the tackle was being thrown. And, uh, Gary Neville said like it felt like 1970s. It, it did feel like the 1970s today. The, the conditions made it that way. Scott McTominay, I think, probably can consider himself a little bit lucky not to have been sent off in that game. I think the aggression towards the last 10 minutes when we just needed a bit of game management, it, it eluded him. But United conceding two goals, right? And you're thinking, fuck, we've done it again. We have done it again. And this is... That last 30 minutes of that game there is the best bit of in-game management I've seen from a Manchester United manager in a long, long time. To take off Paul Pogba in that situation, Paul Pogba, what's he down there as? He got 7.3. I would probably say he was high. Well, uh, fair enough. Right? I would probably put him a little bit higher. Paul Pogba was easily the master on the pitch today. The per the he was at levels above everybody else. And for him to take Paul Pogba off, I was surprised. I was, I was like, really? Yeah, you sure about that? And then within the space of 10 minutes, Fred pops up with the goal. Great move from United. Great play. I think, was it Sancho who passed it to, to Fred? And an absolute belting finish from a man who really, as far as we know, can't really finish that well. But that's two really important goals that Fred has scored for Ralph Radnick. Crystal Palace in his first game now. And that goal there away at Leeds. And who came up with the fourth towards the end? Like an Anthony Alanga, man. Anthony Alanga, I've got nothing but love for the kid, man. Uh, he's come into this United team where when so much is being asked and questioned about the commitment of the players, the attitude towards, uh, you know, actually working hard. Uh, and today for him to have got that goal, um, to end the game, to shush those fans, to do that was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm half tempted to like, hey, one second, I'm going to have to bring it up here. I'm going to have to go here bring up this picture of Anthony Langa because that was the money. That is the money shot. That one right there. To see Anthony Langa get the chance to do that and just do these Leeds fans, you scummy little bastards, sending, throwing in those coins, trying to hurt. Mate, come on, man. Some people just always got to take it too far. And to see him get the ability to do that, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And I'm, I'm so over the moon for him on an individual basis and, of course, for United's basis. As I said, game management is something that's just deluded us. Game, game management's always almost seemed like we're trying to read in Mandarin. It's a foreign language. We don't really know what to do. We, we don't really have game management. And that does stem from the manager. For sure, it stems from the manager. But today, he brought on Fred. He brought on Elanga ahead of Marcus Rashford. And what happened? Both of them scored. Both of them crucial in Manchester United, controlling the, controlling, controlling the last... 20, 25 minutes of that game when it could have easily got away from us because after they scored that second goal, Adam Rowe was obviously bouncing. But that was an absolutely crap, relegation-worthy Leeds team. I don't care that, Jack, that Dan James got that assist and I'm glad it didn't lead to anything worse than that. But probably to a man today, I'm trying to think of any players that really sort of let the game go by. I, it, it almost felt like they all knew the occasion. The players knew the occasion and the atmosphere responded to it and as i said for the neutral that's one of the most exhilarating games of football you're ever likely to see it got a bit old school it got to the 70s type of feel tackles being thrown in everywhere scraps on the sideline managers getting angry hands up in the air it was it was everything you could want as a neutral for a united fan i mean i'd rather not have that i'd rather united tune it up i'd rather we just see the game out really nicely but you know that's not what united do these days is it but uh, after a week as i said I said this in the build-up to the game. After a week where there's been so much circus and so much of a sideshow at Manchester United that you just don't want as a United fan, we can end the weekend with this image in our heads. Shh. A wonderful celebration from Anthony Elanga because football, hey man, results change everything. Harry Maguire, I haven't spoken too much about him in this match reaction, but I've got to give him credit. As I've said to you all along, ladies and gents, I'm not somebody who has an individual agendas. My only agenda is what is best for Manchester United and everything will be geared towards that. Harry Maguire today got the header, played pretty well, I thought. Ish. I mean, the whole defence basically went to sleep for the two goals. Can't really blame anybody too much for the first goal, but for the second goal, especially Luke Shaw at the back post. Horrendous. But fair play to Maguire, man. In a week where so much criticism has been aimed towards him, that's what you expect your captains to do. That's you have they have to be able to respond in the face of adversity and come up trumps. And for for a man who's from Sheffield playing Leeds in Yorkshire as a United captain, 
it was like a double bastard from Maguire today. So absolutely happy days for him for that. And United, look, 4-2, three points. After the week we've had, that's what we needed, right? Let's go into this Atletico Madrid game full of confidence, full of beans. Hopefully Pob is completely fit to play in that because Jesus, as we saw today, we need him in this team. And that's why I said I've got no agenda against Pob for now. If we're a better team with Pob but in between now and the end of the season, I'm starting him every week. And today... He was arguably man of the match until he went off. Who am I giving man of the match? I mean, I, as I said, I'm probably going to give it to Jaden Sancho. I think uh, in a game where where so much rain was on that pitch, it was very difficult for a player like him to really play the style of play he he plays. But what a lovely pass that was into um, Bruno Fernandez! What a lovely pass I think it was to to Fred. Oh, as I said, I'm just I feel knackered. I feel like I'm going to go for a nap after this. 4-2 winners against Leeds at Ellen Road. Uh, the, the game lived up to its billing, all right? The game lived up to its billing. I wish United didn't just concede that two-goal lead, but we came back. We showed a bit of attitude. We showed a bit of in-game management. As I said, that game management from Radnick's the best we've seen, I believe, in a single in, in, in a single game situation from a United manager in a long, long time. Decisions that, had they not gone for him, he would have got so much stick for, but he's he read the game and he read it perfectly. Well done to Ralph. Well done to Fred. Well done to Ilanga. Well done to everybody today. Three huge points and what a game. Seriously, I'm going for a lie down. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. But I mean, that's that's literally why we call them scum, right? Brian Coins.